Hey, before we get started here, I just want to say, if you're using this as an installation guide and you got this big package of boxes like I did, do not be intimidated. It's much easier than it looks, it doesn't take much time, and it's really well packaged. So most of what you see here is packaging, which really protects the product. And if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. We'd really appreciate it. Give us a like click. And in this video, I'll be reviewing and explaining the Artillion ROPS system. I want to start out by saying I've used the tool rack a lot already. We've had a little bit of a warm up here. I recorded this when it was really cold, but we have had a warm up in the 40s uh, for a couple days and nice sunshine. And that makes us want to get outside and work. And the bar mount tool rack has been perfect for me to take the steel trimmer, the steel pole saw, and a rake with me to clean up some limbs that are hanging down or a brush that's kind of in the way. And I was excited about taking that tool rack with the shovel and the rake on it. But then I tried the trimmer and the pole saw and found what an excellent use the tool rack is for objects like that, which means it'll be great for springtime work, great for summertime because I can just haul the trimmer with me on the back of the tractor. And in the wintertime, you'll see I put a picture here that I also would use the shovel on that rack. So as I'm plowing snow with the tractor, the shovel was right on the back if I needed the hand shovel in an area that I couldn't get to with the snow plow. So I think this is a perfect springtime addition to your tool arsenal. Hi, Chad here with Purple Car Life. I want to show you something exciting I got today. You may recognize some of these things, but this is the ROPS tool mount, rollover protection system, tool mount system from Artillion. So you can see I got a mounting bar here with the hardware and that'll attach to the ROPS on the back of the tractor. And I got the same bar with a wall mount so that all of these attachments when they're not on the tractor can go on the wall in the garage. That's a great way to store them, great way to keep everything together and it's nice that you can take something quickly off of the tractor and place it into the garage for storage. Now there are many attachments that work with that system. Here's just a few that I got. I got the nice large Artillion toolbox. You can see it's got that mounting bracket so that when this is on the back of the tractor, this just sits on there. And that way I have a toolbox with me when I'm on the tractor if I need to go work on something that requires tools. Now there's lots of things you could put in here depending on your project, but remember that time I was replacing the battery on the tractor and I kept coming over to the garage to get a million different tools. It'd be nice to have tools in one place you can just throw it on the back of the tractor. You're going over there to work on something and you've got the tools right with you. Got the five gallon bucket mount, so you can just slide a five gallon bucket down in here. Perfect if you need to just haul something from point A to point B. We use buckets all the time around here. Um, just throw wiring or tools that you're gonna be using to work and the boxes and the stuff I'm gonna be needing right into a five gallon bucket. It's a perfect way to move things from one place to another. This is the one I'm most excited about. This is the chainsaw holder. So now when I'm going into the woods, usually I've got the grapple on the front end or the bucket. This gives me a good place to put the chainsaw on the back of the tractor so that it's not down on the floorboard or hauling it in the bucket or leaving it on the ground in the woods and then coming back for it. Great idea. Um, and this, this is gonna be awesome. I'll use this thing all the time. Now when I'm going back in the woods to use my chainsaw, this will be a nice thing to have. I'll show you. It mounts onto the bracket and this holds your uh, gasoline or your bar oil. It's got places on it to put the wedges down through, maybe take a hatchet with you. So we'll get this mounted up and we will be getting to spring here sooner or later. And this will be a great thing to have in the springtime. This holds your tools like shovels, rakes, um, and you can see you can hold four of them at a time. So this is perfect in the springtime. You know, you always have a shovel with you on the tractor or a rake cleaning things up. You can just mount those right on here, take them with you on the back of the tractor. Perfect system. Now I'm gonna take these off of the pallet here and then I'll pull the tractor out, turn it around, back it in. And we'll get that ROPS bar mounted. Now one of the things you need to think about because you can mount this pretty much anywhere up and down your ROP system. And I don't actually have that much ROP spar here to choose from. I was thinking about putting it right here under the lights. But I'm a little bit worried that 
when I have things hanging off them, they'll be hanging pretty low, like the bar of my chainsaw. But if I go higher, I'm worried it'll be hard to lift the chainsaw up and in. But the nice thing is, it's not a permanent installation. So if I put it here, I don't like it, I just take the attachments off, loosen some bolts, and I can move it down here. So I think we'll start with it here, see what we think. Once again, the instructions from Artillion look like they're good and detailed. They've got illustrations and steps. Describe which tools you need to use. And I really like this. Estimated times. Experienced dealer technician, 15 minutes. Average dealer technician, 25 minutes. Do it yourself, 45 minutes. So let's see how long it takes us. At this point, I had to turn the heater on in the garage. I was just getting too cold. So here you can see I've put that little adhesive strip on the side of the ROPS mounting bar. And it uses U-bolts to mount onto the sides of the ROPS. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can do it from the inside with the U-bolts on the outside. I opted for the bracket on the outside and the U-bolts on the inside. Now it would be handy to have an extra set of hands here. It's hard to hold the bracket, the U-bolt, the inside of the bracket, and the nuts at the same time. But I show here that this entire installation can be done by one person. And you may have actually noticed, I've had this installed for a while, I've been using it. If you watch some of my previous snowplow videos with the John Deere, you'll see that I had the toolbox on the back for a while and uh, had that ROPS toolbar on the back for most of those videos. So I recorded this when it was pretty cold, just haven't had a chance to edit this video and get ready to release. That little thing I'm attaching now is just a little bit of support that keeps the bracket from sagging. And you'll see, I'm just kind of finger tightening everything now. I do use the impact gun to, just because those are self-locking nuts. So you do have to use some force to get them to even go on to the bolt. But I'm not super tightening everything at this point because I want to make sure in the future that things are level and square. So you can see one person can do this. You just need a wrench on one side and the impact gun on the other. Here I'm taking the four foot level and making sure that I've got the bracket level between the two sides, left and right. And then I've got the little level to make sure that they are level with the ground. And I'm making adjustments and then retightening that little support piece and the U-bolt. And again, I'm not... I'm not using a lot of torque on these, just tightening them to hold them in place. Now there's two different types of toolbar mount. There's the permanent mount, which I'm going to show you here, and then in a little bit I'll show you the removable toolbar mount. I have both in this system, but I wanted to show those of you who get the permanent mount what that looks like. And what I mean by permanent is that the toolbar stays mounted to those arms on the ROPS. On the removable mounting system, you can easily just pull a pin and lift that toolbar off of the support bars. And everything's got a lot of foam to hold it in place, so you kind of have to squeeze things together here to get the bolts to go through and the nuts started. And it all is really well explained in the instructions here. You can see I'm measuring to see if I've got the toolbar the same distance out from the side and then I measure from the bracket also because depending on where you've got the little mounting bracket uh, the distance could be different on each side. So then you just tighten those up once you're ready. That entire process didn't take very long at all. I know it said that DIY was 45 minutes. I'm guessing I, I didn't keep track but I'm guessing that probably took me 20 to 25 minutes. Maybe the same as a less experienced technician. Here I'm just tightening things up. And now I'm going to show you, if you have the quick release toolbar kit, how that mounts. So there are little brackets that attach to the toolbar bracket. 
and they've kind of got like a hinge look to them. You can see that gold colored pin sticking up. And they come with nice carriage bolts, so that's nice. They hold the bolt in place on the front, and then you're just tightening from the back. There is a left side and right side to this. You want to make sure you get them oriented like I have them here. And they just tighten on with the nuts and bolts. There's the other side of the hinge type bracket. Just slides down over top. You can see that it's got those rubber sticky pieces on it that hold the toolbar in place. And I've, I've learned... I learned during this process to leave that toolbar up on top on one side that you're not working on. It keeps you, if you're working by yourself, to, from having to constantly maintain balance of that toolbar. So here you can see there's just enough end of the bolt to come through. You really have to squeeze it. And you can see here I do have one side up on top of the bracket as I work on the other side. Like I said, that just makes it easier when you're working with just one person to complete this install. Now you can see that nut is not on the right hand side. I learned as I was installing this that if you just attach or affix one end of that bracket, it makes it easier to slide the toolbar left and right to get it centered on the bracket. So on the left hand side, I put the nut on the bottom, the right hand side, I put the nut on the top so that I could make adjustments to that toolbar. And I'm measuring from the outside of the bracket so that I make sure it's equidistant on both sides. That's important so that when you're mounting the tool attachments, you can straddle that bracket section on both sides of the toolbar. Now, now that I have it centered, I go ahead and tighten those brackets. And that's what the finished install looks like here. I'm just checking level to make sure we're still level left to right. They give you these nice uh, bolt covers and they just slip on. There's a spot down there I just touched where you can actually put a padlock through there if you wanted to make sure that your bar was not removed from the tractor and the left hand side has that nice pin so you can see you just pull that pin out and that enables you to lift the entire toolbar off of those brackets so it's a really convenient system here I'm installing that Artillion toolbox and this is just your basic toolbox. It's not anything super fancy, but it's a great place to keep tools. It does have that removable tray, which is nice for, you know, screwdrivers and things you need more often. Here's what I call the rake bar. You put your shovels and rakes on. And I've already used that several times. It is starting to warm up here now. So... I'm putting the shovel and the rake on it as I go out in the yard and clean up from winter time. I put my Artillion sticker on there. And don't forget this rake bar can actually be mounted as it is horizontally or you can mount it vertically. Now one thing I did notice, this is a very thick wooden handled shovel. So you can see I'm adjusting it here, but the thickest part of the handle would not latch in those latches. Now, they're, they're a rubber piece, so they do stretch and expand. And I was able to get the thin part of the shovel handle, but you can see here there's no problem with the rake handle. Now that these 
straps have the e-track attachments on them and I, I'm very familiar with these because I use them in my enclosed trailer. I have lots of e-track on the sidewalls and these type of attachments are great. You can see this chainsaw gas and oil mounting basket has all kinds of attachment points for that e-track fitting. So you can put you know, a larger can in there and strap it on, which I'm showing here. So anything you wanted to keep contained in that basket, uh, really easy to just use the strap, pull it tight, and there you can see nothing could fall out of there. And then it's just a quick slide to loosen it up. Here I'm putting my mixed chainsaw gasoline and my bar and chain oil. You can see they can be configured multiple different ways in there. They fit easily. And then those cam locks allow you to slide all your attachments on and off of the toolbar very easily. Here I'm putting on the bucket holder. You can see those cam locks just push down and hold it tightly in place on the toolbar. So there's a five gallon bucket. Here's that chainsaw holder. So again, those cam locks hold it in place. Now when things are brand new, those cam locks are tight. So you do have to use some effort to lock them in place. You pull a pin and pull the front cam lock down. That allows you to slide the chainsaw bar down through there. I like to put the entire weight of the chainsaw onto the top of that holder so that it's not the bar holding it in place. And you can see that cam is tight on the bar of the chainsaw because it's the first time being used. But with some effort, I'm able to lock it in place and then that pin keeps it from falling down. Now I want to check here that when I raise up the three-point hitch, my top link wouldn't hit my bar. And it looked like if I had kept going, it would have, which is what I was worried about. So I can just loosen those cam locks for the chainsaw mount, slide it a little bit to the side on my toolbar, re-secure it in place, and then lift the three-point hitch the rest of the way up. So you do want to keep that in mind. Anything you mount on this toolbar, just make sure there's enough clearance if you lift your three-point attachment up that it's not hitting something on the toolbar. Now here I'm just playing with configurations to see you know, what things I can fit where. That works. I'm trying to slide the chainsaw to the other side to see if that'll give me enough space for everything. It doesn't quite, if you want to use the chainsaw, the toolbox, and the chainsaw fuel and oil case. But it's an amazing setup, and I've used it several times already. I don't record all of the times I use things, but it has been really nice to have the tools or the chainsaw or even just a bucket as I'm moving from place to place back in the woods or here in the yard. Now you can see I did have some sag when I was putting the chainsaw and everything on there. So I'm readjusting those brackets, re-leveling, and tightening them up a little bit more than I had tightened them before. And that may be required. After the first time you install it and use it, you may see that things kind of sag down a little bit. You may need to re-tighten at that point. If you like videos like this, make sure you click that like button. And in the next video, you'll see the wall mount for the toolbar and all the tools. Thanks for watching. We'll see you the next time.